Welcome to City This Week, I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in this week's top news, Taiwan City volunteers continue to help residents clean up homes that were affected by Typhoon Su leak. In the Philippines, a 17-year-old City Care recipient receives a cataract surgery thanks to City's free clinic. And City Foundation joins the 24th Annual 2013 Hong Kong Book Fair, promoting City's magazine, Rhythms Monthly. We start today's show in Zhongli, Taiwan, where a Ziji Care recipient's family's finances is based on the money they make collecting recyclables. Their house, in the meantime, has become a mess with discarded refuse filling every corner. Following the collapse of the family's roof in the wake of Typhoon Su Leak, Ziji volunteers took the opportunity to not only repair the walls and roofs of the house, but also clean up the family's home. Let's take a look. With every inch of this home covered in discarded items and junk, there is little room to sleep or even walk. It is hard to believe that four people live here on a daily basis. Next, the daughter goes to show the volunteers a picture of her deceased father, which, like everything else, is covered in unnecessary clutter. Yeah, you Unable to bear to see the family living in such conditions, volunteers decided to help. Things that can be recycled should be done so. Those things that can't be recycled should all be gotten rid of. For the family, however, every item in the house has a memory behind it and they find it hard to forget. Even after agreeing to the cleaning, there are certain things that they just don't want to let go of. <laughs> Mobilizing so many city brothers and sisters was in hopes of cleaning up the entire house in one go, because we have found if we only do half, the other half never gets finished by the family, regardless if we are talking about 10 or 20 days after. In fact, they will start to collect more things. In the end, seven truckloads of garbage are hauled away. The first step in ensuring the house stops being an eyesore in the neighborhood. We help her with her house and cleaning. That way, her living environment, our living environment, and in fact, the entire surrounding environment will all see an improvement. The love of the city volunteers not only gives this family a new home, but also a heart filled with hope. Thank you again, Uncle Wei. In Taiwan's new Taipei City, city care recipient Mr. Yang lives in a broken down house in Shantung District with his family. As the house always leaks, Mr. Yang and his son had to move elsewhere. Unwilling to see the family separated, city volunteers arrived last weekend to help renovate their apartment. The kitchen and bathroom leak all the time in this 30 year old house and thus city volunteers are here to give it a big makeover. Though we came across the typhoon, I, I woke up this morning praying that this would all be over soon so that the construction work can continue as we planned. We must do what we can to keep the house from leaking again. This family isn't doing well. They had it tough and need help from others. It's great that city volunteers are here to help. Otherwise, they won't be able to manage on their own. Over 40 shifts of city volunteers were mobilized over two days. Some are in charge of woodwork, while others take care of the cement. Though sweating non-stop, volunteers only hope to give the young family a better living environment. We hope that the family will at least have a stable house to live in, and by doing that, they will also be able to take care of each other as well. The Cixi brothers and sisters have been a great help in renovating my house. I am speechless. My house has never been so beautiful. The elder son moved out and so did the father. We hope that by changing their living environment, that the whole family can live together once again. With help from city volunteers, there is hope of a better and brighter future for the young family of four. 
Through caring for our care recipient, Malaysia's city volunteers in Kota Kinabalu found that most residents living in Bukit Nanas had no working permit and worked odd jobs. The unstable income also means they do not have three meals a day and, of course, no extra money to visit doctors should they become ill. Knowing the hardship of these residents, city volunteers and TMA members arrived to hold a free clinic and treated 150 patients. Through visiting a care recipient, city volunteers in Kota Kinabalu learn of the hardship of the residents in this remote village, where most are without working visas and stable jobs. When we visited this care recipient with aid supplies, we realized the living condition of all the villagers is really tough, as most of them don't have legal documents, so when they become ill, they don't dare visit the doctor. And secondly, they are all struggling to make ends meet. Upon learning of the difficult living environment of these villages, city volunteers decide to hold a free clinic to help alleviate their suffering, and in the process find that many are unaware of their health condition. A woman came here, we tested her blood sugar level and found that it was really high. The result was the same for both examinations. She has symptoms. She is dehydrated all the time and goes to the bathroom a lot. In situations like this, she is most likely a diabetic patient. I asked her to refrain from eating any sugary food. Tima medical staff attentively treat each patient with love and care, an act which deeply moves all those taking part in a free clinic. Without any papers, some have their employers as their guarantors, so they have stable jobs. Those without can only work odd jobs, and I feel sorry for them. When they fall ill, they use folk methods. I know because I live here and see it with my own eyes. Your free clinic really helps. I don't know where else we can find such great service. I feel very comfortable having Siji here. Like today, it is great that the doctor could check up on my child. I'm really grateful. It's good to know what the condition is. City volunteers hope to continue to safeguard these residents' health by teaching them prevention is always better than cure. Moving to China, as part of their regular visits, Fujian City volunteers went to Xiamen's Da Deng Island, where they deliver much needed emotional support to care recipients. Despite living in difficulties, the care recipients persevered in facing the challenges ahead. Moved by the care recipients' unfaltering spirit, the volunteers all vowed to continue to help those in need in the days ahead. Once again, city volunteers arrived to visit care recipient Xie Jinghui, who has been bedridden for six years. Showered with the volunteers' care and love over the past three years, Xie is full of gratitude. During every visit, volunteers seize the opportunity to give him a massage, hoping it can help soothe his anxious heart. As well, city volunteers bring warmth and love to 92-year-old Grandma Zhen, who instead of enjoying her retired life, has to look after her bedridden son. Stay positive, don't worry, be happy. Action speaks louder than words, and as the volunteers help wash her laundry, Grandma Zhen can deeply sense the volunteers' genuine care and compassion. Every time city volunteers visit, Lin Chang joyfully joins them in learning sign language. From their time with their care recipients, city volunteers find the purest love in the world. Next, we meet 17-year-old Homarie Canetas of the Philippines, who suffer from genetic cataracts. Later, he was introduced to city volunteers who subsidized his cataract surgery in a free clinic. Now with ICC, Homarie Canetas vows to be a social worker to help more people like him. Living with his family is city care recipient Homaria Canales. Despite only being 17, Canales already suffers cataracts due to a genetic disorder. We are here to help you, not only on your eyes. Despite his misfortune, Canales has never given up. The scholarship he received helped him complete his high school studies. Other than his excellent academic performance, Canales also won dozens of medals in several competitions.
We have very competitive opponents. Though we only got a silver medal, we are very happy. As his family cannot afford his college tuition, Canadas chose to suspend his schooling and now works as a part-time masseur to earn his tuition. I would like to become a social worker so that I can help the needy and the people who have eye problems like us. Thanks to his parents' teachings, Canadas always looks on the bright side of life and never gives up. Both of his parents are grateful for Siji, who is paying for their son to undergo the cataract surgery. I am so happy because my son can undergo cataract surgery with the help of Siji. Thank God he finally has a chance to recover his vision. On the day of the operation, Canadas was accompanied by his mother to Siji's free clinic center in Manila. He is excited as you know in 30 minutes his life will change for the better. Life is what you make it. It is not important what you lose in life. What matters is what is left for you to improve your life. Now with eyes to see, Homaria Canares looks forward to a brighter future. Recently in Malaysia, Malacca City Volunteers was informed of a case where a father-daughter pair was suffering from health problems. After meeting each other, the volunteers realized the two were living in an unsanitary environment. Thus, the angels in blue and white decided to help them clean up their house. Broken furniture and garbage everywhere, this is the home of Mr. Yang and his daughter. Today, Tsuji volunteers are here to help this father-daughter pair clean up their living surroundings, as the pair suffers from health problems that may be linked to their unsanitary living environment. We treat this place like our own house and this father-daughter pair as our family. 22 Tsuji volunteers were split into two teams, with some cleaning up the house and others sorting the garbage. Everyone works hand in hand to give Mr. Yang and his daughter a clean place to call home. Today, all of us are filled with Dharma joy. Although we didn't receive any pay, all of us were happy to help out. Everyone is willing to help as long as we are doing good deeds. Touched by the volunteers' gestures, Mr. Yang and his daughter also joined the volunteers in cleaning up. Whether it is the kitchen, bathroom or living room, every room is clean and tidy once again. Thank you all so much because my father and I can't clean up this place by ourselves. I am truly grateful. Thank you all for cleaning our house. Bless you. All of you are my guardian angels. Thank you so much. Thanks to the volunteers effort, this house is now shines bright and true once again. The 24th annual Hong Kong Book Fair this year will span seven days and draw in 560 exhibitors from 30 countries. Among the exhibitors is Tsuji Foundation. Hong Kong Tsuji volunteers also seize the opportunity to spread Tsuji's humanitarianism to fairgoers. At the fair, an area was also set up to promote Rhythms Monthly in hopes that the magazine will attract more people to care for this world together. A day before the start of the 2013 Hong Kong Book Fair, staff members from Taiwan's City Humanitarian Center are setting up their venue. Like in previous years, City volunteers are here and work to set up a section dedicated to Rhythm's Monthly Magazine. The theme of this year's fair is much like our motto at Rhythm's Monthly, which is why we hope to promote our magazine here in Hong Kong. We invite more intellectuals to get in touch with our world to make it a more beautiful place. The theme of this year's book fair is Reading for a Better World, with exhibitors from some 30 countries taking part. Apart from promoting their very own vegetarian recipe books, Volunteers from Taiwan have also come to promote the magazine Rhythms Monthly to participants. What this magazine incorporates is humanitarianism and an appreciation for our world. We want to use this opportunity to promote Taiwanese society and culture to our friends in Hong Kong. With the volunteers' thorough explanations, local residents learn that a simple article holds the strength to change the world. I feel that the magazine is very well put together and it has quality content. It's unlike other magazines on the shelves. 
The photographs are so amazing. It seems that a lot of work went into it capturing these shots. I think the rhythm monthly is definitely worth the read. Through the annual book fair, volunteers hope members of the public not only read for a better world, but also read to gain wisdom as well. In the United States, city volunteers in California have been holding training seminars for those who would like to become certified city commissioners. At the city El Monte liaison office, training volunteers attended eight seminars and all found the classes spiritual fulfilling. Meanwhile, at the city Northern California chapter, 44 trainee volunteers have also completed a year-long volunteer training program. Let's take a look. Through singing sutras, trainee volunteer Lan Jianchen finds tranquility in his heart. For example, my former employer, he used to be very mean to everyone at the meetings, and a lot of us complained. But then we can't change him. After joining the musical, the lyrics told me to change myself first. Here at the city Northern California chapter, 44 trainees have been taking part in a year-long volunteer training program and have all gained much in the process. Um, and then also the cruelty to the animals. Um, that are being slaughtered for for the purpose of uh, for, for for my food, and so therefore, uh, Lily and I we said we 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 don't want this anymore. We d we want to you know follow uh, Tzu Chi, what the teachings are, much better for our uh, earth, and much better for our, our inner inner uh, uh, soul. Though the journey is far for some, city volunteers from different cities in Northern California are here to gain a better understanding of Tiji's humanitarian spirit. Also attending regular training seminars are volunteers at the city El Monte liaison office who have come to understand the Buddhist NGO's philosophy. After attending all eight seminars, I have come to understand what contentment, gratitude, understanding and accommodation is all about. With their compassion inspired, volunteers all vow to remain determined on their city path and through listening to a fellow volunteers sharing on the reconstruction effort in Haiti, these volunteers also promise to continue their training in the days ahead. Earlier in July, at the city Guangzhou Grounds in Taipei, Taiwan, an intensive volunteer training seminar was held to encourage both new and senior volunteers to further participate in city's activities. Jinse Bo Dharma Master De Shen was also present at the seminar to pass on words of wisdom to the volunteers. Xu Meihuan is studying the sign language movements of the Sutra of Innumerable Meanings. She recently came back to Taiwan to take care of a few things but she does not spare any moment of rest, thus joining this event at Guangdu Grounds in Taipei. I used to be a person who only brought and used the best, and every time I came back, I would shop a lot. But since coming in contact with Tsuji over the past few years, my desires have decreased. I think the Tsuji brand is enough to last me a whole lifetime. At this half-day intensive Tsuji volunteer training seminar, besides senior volunteers sharing their experiences, Jin Sabo Dharma Master De Xuan had encouraging words of wisdom for newly certified volunteers. Many people will humbly say that they don't know what they can do or how to help, but if we can extend a caring hand or a warm welcome, together we can accomplish many things. Besides attending Tsuji events, caring for fellow compatriots is also important, like Tsuji volunteer Wu Chongyao, who not only helps spread Tsuji's missions, but also looks after new recruits like a mother hen. I can't do much, but at least I can help Master Zhen Yin look after the other volunteers who are just starting out and guide them in the right direction so they are not discouraged while walking the Tsuji path. This is my greatest wish. When we lead new recruits, we should not just put them to work after work, we should interact with them to help them reflect on what they have learned in the process or what they have gained from the Master's wisdoms. No matter if it's a senior volunteer or a new recruit, everyone walked away from the half-day seminar recharged with spiritual sustenance and ready to head back out walking on the Tsuji path. 
Next, Indonesia Tsuji volunteers held a gratitude event to thank those in the community who have given their time and energy to make Tsuji's events a success over the past year. <laughs> As the big night draws near, volunteers put the final touches on the food and their performances. The reason behind tonight's activities is to thank the volunteers and the community members that have helped at our Tsuji events. The night's events were shared by all and also inspired a few to officially become part of Tsuji. My connection with the Master started when I heard the Master's speech. Hearing her speak on repentance and vegetarianism woke me up to the fact that I need to repent for all my past behavior. Following on the month of Ramadan, the event shows once again how Tsuji embraces all faith in its mission of great love. Back in Taiwan, in the past seven years, Tsuji volunteers in Shuling District in Taipei City have practiced recycling at the Ganyuan Elementary School. Among the many volunteers is a Tsuji Care recipient who, will, who was left immobile from a stroke. However, doing recycling has helped him gain back some of his mobility. Here's more. 50-year-old Mr. Peng had a stroke, leaving his left hand useless. However, over the past six years, he has still showed up to help sort recyclables. The activity, he says, is a way to exercise and help him recover. Tsuji sisters asked me to help sort recyclables as a way to exercise and help me recover. Six years on, now I can walk and my hands are much more flexible. Tsuji has helped me improve my health. After I fully recover, I will join them to help more people in need. Other than Mr. Peng, some 100 people also joined the recycling volunteers to store recyclables at the recycling station in Ganyuan Elementary School, Shuling District, New Taipei City. For seven years, everyone, rain or shine, joins together to make the planet a better place. Each principal of the school has been very supportive of our recycling mission. We hope to inspire the students to bring our environmental ideals back home as a way to spread them throughout the community. In 2006, Tsuji volunteers set up a recycling station where local residents come to recycle on a monthly basis. To encourage such efforts, the school arranged a larger space for recycling so that more people can join the cause. We will arrange a larger recycling space to attract more people to join Tsuji's recycling activities. This way, our community and environment will get better and better. At the end of the show, we traveled to Malaysia with Tainan Tsuji senior high students on their cultural exchange trip. One of their stops was in a nursing home in Malaga's Machabaru. The young ones brought an energetic vibe to the quiet home by singing and chatting with the senior residents. Spending all this time with seniors reminded several students of their grandparents at home and they vowed to pay them a visit when the trip ends. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. Have a good weekend.